Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off with some exoskeleton news, and Alxivo recently announced the OmniSuit, which they say is the first multitask workplace exoskeleton. Unlike others on the market, which focus on a single action like overhead lifting, bending or forward leaning tasks, this exo is capable of doing it all while remaining pretty lightweight. The first public presentations are scheduled at various industry fairs in Belgium and Germany later this month, with private demonstrations available to businesses now. In similar news, a team at Chungang University in South Korea has developed an exosuit that can help runners cover short distances faster. Weighing in at 4.4 kilograms, this exosuit works by pulling a cable that's attached to the runner's trailing leg, forcing it forward faster than it naturally would. Over a 200 meter sprint, the researchers managed to shave off almost one second off average times. The apparent march of automation continues. This time UPS and Origo have announced a collaborative project to deploy Autocargo, an autonomous electric vehicle designed to move heavy cargo loads to and from aircraft at the UPS hub at East Midlands Airport, the UK's second largest cargo terminal. Honda also unveiled an autonomous work mower prototype. This electric vehicle is capable of operating in both manual or autonomous mode, and when manually operated, the AWM learns and repeats the mowing routes and patterns set by the operator. Waymo is also expanding its service. The Alphabet-owned company recently announced they are opening their robo-taxi service up to all areas of San Francisco, marking an interesting milestone with these kinds of projects. According to the post on X, this fully autonomous service is available 24-7. I wonder how many of these are going to get wrecked. Over in artificial intelligence, and Adobe has teased a new Project Stardust feature for their Firefly Generative AI suite of tools. From the sneak peek, it seems like these new features basically turn flat photos and images into fully editable designs, making it easy to move, edit, delete or replace sections by using various text prompts and commands. Toyota's research institute showed off a new way that they are teaching their robots to perform tasks. They combine teleoperated demonstrations with AI large behavior models to quickly teach them to do all sorts of things from using tools to pouring liquids, peeling vegetables, picking up a variety of objects and lots more. The institute has set up essentially a kindergarten for the robots with the aim of teaching them general dexterous skills so that when combined with their large behavior models, the robots can eventually learn how to do new tasks without needing human demonstration. Another interesting feature is fleet updates, meaning when one robot learns something new, then every single other robot also learns it immediately, which obviously will have a massive impact on learning speeds. Lots of flying machine news this week. Firstly, Teledyne Fleur unveiled their fourth generation Black Hornet mini drone. The tiny drone features a new 12 megapixel daytime camera, plus a new high resolution thermal imager. At 70 grams, the Black Hornet 4 has a flying time of more than 30 minutes, range greater than 2 kilometers, and can fly in 25 knot winds. Electric flying taxi designer Joby Aviation has expanded its flight test program to now include flying with a test pilot on board in another step towards full commercial operations. This testing, which took place in Marina, California, complements ongoing flight testing at Edwards Air Force Base, where both Joby and US Air Force pilots will demonstrate the aircraft's capabilities in realistic operating scenarios. The wider trend of all electric flying craft continues too, with Regent recently raising $60 million in a Series A funding round. Notable investors include Lockheed Martin and Japan Airlines. The company aims to run crewed flights next year and deliver its sea gliders to customers sometime mid-decade. Moving over to research news, and soft robotics seems to be a growing area of interest. A team from the Korea Institute of Science and Technology have developed a novel soft mechanism for robotic grippers, which is extremely simple and can be made from a variety of materials. In their experiment, the team showed a woven gripper design made from thin PET plastic that weighs only 130 grams. When twisted, it can pick up objects up to 100 kilograms in weight. Researchers at the University of Bristol have also developed a tetrahedron-shaped robot with flexible piping known as Tetraflex that can move through small gaps or over-challenging terrain. It can also encapsulate fragile objects such as an egg and transport them safely within its soft body. Their design uses soft struts which can change length independently. Changing the lengths of these struts by the right amount and in the right sequence allows it to move in various ways, such as rolling or crawling. In open source news, I saw two cool open hardware projects recently. Designed by embedded software developer Sergey Silnov, the Crab Apple Pad is a wireless folding keyboard that you can make yourself. It has 42 keys, uses Kyle X switches, connects via Bluetooth, and can optionally attach an Apple Magic trackpad in the middle. 
case and PCB designs are available on the project's GitHub page. The team behind the Raspberry Pi based CinePi camera recently uploaded a new video showing off the latest version of the project. The cam has a Super 8 size sensor, the Sony IMX477, 12-bit cinema DNG recording capabilities, 4-inch touchscreen interface, external USB 3 SSD feature, Noctua cooling system and more. The video quality that this thing is capable of is quite nice, and I look forward to seeing more from this project. And ending this week with a couple curious crowdfunding electronics products. Firstly, Big Me has launched a Kickstarter for a new 25-inch colour e-ink display. The B251 has a 25.3 inch display with resolution of 3200 by 1800 pixels and comes in two variants, one as a standalone display and another with an integrated Windows PC with i5 processor. There's something about these type of e-ink displays that appeals to me and I wonder whether the technology would feel better on the eyes for say long stints coding or writing. Prices start at $13.99. Another interesting crowdfunding project I saw was the Murina 2. It's a de-googled Android phone with hardware switches for the camera, microphone and network connectivity. It has a 6.43 inch OLED display, 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, 4000 mAh battery, 3 rear cameras, a micro SD card reader and the early bird price is €399. Euros. I've never heard of this company before. As always, do your own research. Alright that's everything for this update, subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist, see you next time.